Hey folks, Philip Beeman here. I'll show you a little trick I have for cutting hand holds in boxes. I've got a bunch of boxes. I think at one time I had almost 200 of them. I bought from a, an old beekeeper. I think he's dead now, so he's not going to mind if I complain a little bit. Uh, these boxes he made, and he only put handles in the sides, not the ends. He was thinking, well, that's how you should carry them anyway, so you don't tip the frames back and forth. So he deliberately had only cut side holes, and I didn't mind that for years until I got my easy loader, and suddenly it was a real fiasco if the box you wanted to lift with the easy loader didn't have handles on the end. So we've been watching for these boxes, and we found a few. And uh, I want to cut the last, I think this is the last of them. Uh, we were pretty diligent watching for them this summer, so we've got however many boxes here, 10 or so. Some of them are even marked, you know, missing handle. So now the jig I use on the table saw, first of all, I just stack up my data blade just as thick as I can get it, because you want that handhold to have a little bit of room. Uh, I'll probably never use it for fingers, it'll only be for the easy loader, but still it's nice to have a, a decent handle. And then I've mounted a sacrifice uh, template on the side of my table saw here. Uh, and what I've got is marked the halfway point of the between these two stops. The saw is going to be turning, you know, uh, pretty hard uh, this way. So I want I'm going to drop my box down using this stop and then push it back through until I hit that stop and then roll it back out of the handhold. So I'll show you how I do that. All right, so that's putting handholds in. You might have noticed that I always put the um, the kerf side towards the the uh, J. You could do it the other way, but I'm looking to get uh, consistent spacing. So that's, I did that at four inches. If you weren't super careful, you'd have one four inches from the top 
another one four inches in the bottom and then if you're using any kind of boom or mechanical lift you wouldn't get a straight lift and if you're doing it by hand it'll probably be a bit disorientating to try to find that usually you want that that hole to be kind of fingertip distance from the top just the natural feel of that so you can do it without feeling your thumb on top and your uh, fingers find that hole that's kind of the right spacing it doesn't have there's no perfect spot here but that's kind of what I like is just that distance there as I was cutting these I was thinking about uh, getting these and I now remember the story that uh, the old beekeeper he had bought these boxes from someone else who made them and the spacing was a little long so uh, that gentleman, he was thought he was going to foist them off on me. And uh, it was a cold day like today. It was about 20 below. And he wanted $10 a box, and I only wanted to pay a couple bucks. And uh, my usual negotiation strategy is to do it out in the cold, where whoever gets cold feet first will probably give in. And uh, so they, But this, these boxes are a little long. If you had a frame in them, uh, there's just not quite enough distance to drop them. Uh, the frame will tend to fall in, especially if you don't use all 10 frames. And so I, uh, my strategy, I did get them down to I think two bucks a box or maybe even less. Uh, and then I put frame spacers in them. And that was enough to keep the frames kind of in the right place. Now that I've gone to 10 frames a box, really not an issue anymore the frames just sit in there and and they're happy so those frame spaces aren't really uh, needed anymore but i guess the the tip of the day would be if you're negotiating on something with someone who's maybe asking a bit much wait till it's about 20 below and make them stand around in the cold for you to for uh for you to agree with them and wear your warm boots and you'll get your price in the end all right that's it for today have a great day